All right, so let's talk about the sidecar pattern in general. And you will hear about the sidecar pattern usage, especially in the service mesh, in which we'll talk about uh, uh, next, next few lessons, the service mesh. But the general idea about the so-called sidecar pattern is that when you think, for example, of running your infrastructure or running your custom integrations, let's say with Redis, with caching, authorization, authentication, logging, all these things, by default, at least so far, we had to write our custom code. We had to build some of our custom packages, for example, log messages, or that would authenticate the user and so on. So we could actually think about uh, dealing with this, let's say, challenge in another way. Instead of writing our custom, let's say, libraries that will be like part of our code, we could actually have this very small processes up and running next to our apps that uh, when we actually make a request, let's say, to our application, we don't hit the app directly, the microservice directly, uh, but the traffic goes through this so-called sidecar. So, for example, the HTTP request gets redirected to the sidecar, and the sidecar, sidecar for example, authenticates the, the user, encrypts the data, uh, provides some logging, tracing, whatever we want to do with this. So, you, you can think about the sidecar in this particular example, like in some sort of decorator, but on the container level. So now yeah. uh, we simply, without changing the behavior of the uh, of the actual, actually, uh, without changing the implementation mm -hmm. uh, of our application, we can simply extend its behavior, add some new capabilities. So as you mentioned, maybe logging, maybe uh, you know something like attaching some headers or yeah. doing some sort of uh, some sort of stuff. Yeah, and the great idea, I mean, the like the great benefit of this approach is that. You can write your sidecar in like one language. It can be .NET Core, C++, Java, whatever it is, and you can apply it anywhere because the sidecar will be run as a separate process. It yeah. can be run as a, as a container. So if you have your microservice written in PHP and you want to write your sidecar in C++, it doesn't matter. The sidecar is just a process. So it will be your, let's say, middleware or decorator, but at the process level, not yeah, exactly. at the code level. So it can, you can uh, write very efficient sidecars in uh, like specialized languages and just apply them anywhere you want and have the same set of, let's say, logging, tracing, authenticating, encryption uh, amongst multiple services written in different technologies. So we'll just keep, uh, just update the single code base being this uh, sidecar project. So let's see how we can actually use the sidecar in action and what, what does it have to do in common with uh, Kubernetes in general. So if we get back to our code, you can see here that under the SRC we have our nano service, our very simple service, and we have also another project we just call this one sidecar. So the sidecar, what it does, it will, um, it will do the following. Within sidecar, we will, we will tell to which container, to like which service, the traffic should be redirected. So in that case, we are stating that we want to, whenever we hit the sidecar, we want to redirect the traffic to localhost 5000, for example. And keep in mind that even if we load the Kubernetes settings, since we, these two containers, the nano service container and the sidecar container will be, well, managed by the Kubernetes since they are running under the same pod, their networking stack or their volumes will be shared. So this is why here under the Kubernetes settings, you will see that we are using localhost because actually is the shared localhost by yeah, multiple containers. Within the, within the pod, right? Yeah, within the scope of the single pod. Okay. So whenever we hit the sidecar, we want to redirect the traffic to localhost 5000, which will, which will be actually our nano service container. And we want to, for example, uh, include the following headers. We want to add the header called, let's say, context for the, our request. And when we send the response back from our sidecar to the end user, let's say, we want to include the proxy header. Okay. okay. So let's, let's, uh, this is like the sidecar definition. Uh, this is very simple logic, but you can imagine that you can extend it with any sort of headers, logging, caching, whatever you want. And the idea here, when it comes to the code, is just a very simple, let's say, reverse proxy mechanism. So we have set of uh, basic endpoints that we will match anything for get, post, pull, delete, and we could also provide here patch, options, head, and, and so on. And whenever we hit this particular match and endpoint, we simply lock some, uh, lock some information out there and we just redirect this, uh, this request directly to, the, to this microservice that should consume this request. So we are just you know, invoking our HTTP client, uh, verifying what's the HTTP method type, and simply 
redirecting the request here to our microservice, but we are enhancing this request with this uh, headers. So there is our request headers enhanced with the headers provided here under app settings. And when once we get the response back from our microservice, so for example, here, once we receive the response, we are enhancing here the response with our custom response headers. So you will see that actually we'll get these two custom headers whenever we think that we are hitting directly the particular microservice. Okay. So this is uh, like a cycle definition, very simple reverse proxy in that case. And let's try to now apply this to the Kubernetes. So you will find there this pod-sidecar file, another YAML file, and there is a pod definition. So the same stuff as we've seen before, but with some additional, let's say, extension. So we can specify so-called init containers. So this will be container that will be run during the like bootstrapping process of this pod. So we want to run this container called networking. So you can see here that we have two additional files. We have Docker file for our nano service, and we have Docker file called networking and sidecar. So the sidecar is the same ASP.NET Core app. So it's pretty much the same as our base Docker file for nano service, just uh, using a different, uh, different directory for the SRC sidecar as this, uh, as this project. And we have another one called Docker file networking. So this one is actually not related to ASP.NET Core at all. It just uses uh, some plain Ubuntu image and it actually modifies the IP tables. So the way that we can route our requests within our, let's say within our container. So we are just uh, altering the IP tables based on this uh, Ubuntu image uh, here. And we are calling this as our entry point. So what we will do to run this container during this initialization process defined here under these init containers. We just want to uh, call this networking shell script. And if you take a look at this definition, it simply tells, so whenever someone hits these 5,000 endpoints, so whenever someone sends a request to localhost 5000, which is our nano service scenario in this case, we want to redirect this traffic to localhost 5050, which in this case will be our sidecar. So if right. you look to the endpoint definition uh, here, there is our nano service container. So there is our port 5000. So that's our, that's our 5000 port. So we are hitting this container and whenever we hit nano service, we want to redirect this traffic immediately to 5050, which in this case is our sidecar. And then once we redirect this to sidecar, then the sidecar will at some point eventually, like, let's say redirect it back to the nano service because it will have this HTTP client get post put async and we'll just enhance this uh, with the custom headers. Okay, so the init container it here in here is simply responsible for setting this routing rule. Yeah. And then we put within one pod we put uh, both nano service and the sidecar. And since the init container ensures that the mm -hmm. the the actual traffic will go through the sidecar, we should observe that we'll have this custom header attached because that was this exactly. extended capability of the sidecar. Exactly. So the first thing that we need to do is to simply call a Docker build. So we need to build our we have our nano service already built, yeah. So we need to build our two additional containers. So we need to build uh, the image for our sidecar. So we can just do docker build sidecar with minus F and the docker file sidecar. And then we need to build an additional one container. Uh, so we can just type docker build minus T and then our networking. So the same stuff, we're just building our docker file networking okay. uh, docker image. So once we have all of these three images in place, so we can simply check that under docker images, we should see there our uh, images for nano service, for sidecar, and for this, uh, and for the networking container. We can simply type, let's just verify that there is no pods out there. Okay, but we should we should still have our service up and running. We should simply be able to just type kubectl apply minus f and then pod dash sidecar. Okay. So let's start this one and let's take a look at the pods definition. So we have two pods, the, this init container it's been just started and then let's say removed. So it got, I mean, the job of it's this container cool has already completed, okay. yeah. So we can uh, type kubectl get pods. Okay, so we have these two pods. Um, and we can now try to actually see the logs. So we can do something like kubectl get logs and we can provide kubectl logs and we can provide the logs for our container. So if I type nano service pod, if I try to do it like this, 
it will give me this error that I need to actually provide the particular container because right now under our nano service pod we have two we have two containers okay. right so we can do nano service pod and then we can provide the container name so let me open uh, logs for the sidecar with this dash dash follow so we will have this log tailing okay so it will be just you know updating in real time and let's open uh, additional logs for our uh, for our actual nano service. So let's just do nano service pod, nano service follow. So we have our, uh, here we have our sidecar, here is our nano service, and let's try to invoke some requests. So we can go back to the browser, and under localhost free one, yeah, this one, we should be able to hit our nano service. So everything looks as before. We got the response that we expected to receive. But if we take a look at the logs, let's see what happens. So here we already see that our uh, our nano service received this context sidecar header, right? We didn't yeah. send any header for browser. So if we take a look at the sidecar logs, let's see what happens. So when we hit this endpoint, our IP tables rules uh, said that, all right, immediately redirect this 5000 port to 5050 port. So we are hitting our sidecar there, right? So we are executing this get request matching any request at the, at the sidecar level. And then we are redirecting this request back to the to the nano service level, enhancing with the logs, finally receiving some response from the sidecar, so from the nano service container, and redirecting this one back to the end user. So here at this uh, nano service level, we can see our custom header, which was like enriched through the sidecar. And if I want to verify uh, the existence of this uh, custom header for the response, let's yeah, say I want to see this proxy sidecar, yeah. we can, for example, for the CURL, simply exp uh, run the same action. So we can do something like CURL, and then let's say our localhost uh, and the port, which was 31771. If I run it like this, I will get this, but I can do it with minus E. And as you can see, I'm getting back my custom header which was added by the sidecar. So it all goes through the sidecar. The sidecar is now responsible for maybe even terminating the request. Let's say the sidecar will determine, all right, I'm not expecting, I don't want this user to access this endpoint. I will just terminate this request. So I don't even have to sell, I don't even have to, you know, have some sort of authorization yeah. or security policies on my application level. I can move all that stuff into sidecar. Right, yeah. they will just terminate the request, enrich it, do whatever we want with so, it. So when we think about the our distributed system, this mm -hmm. looks like a possible place in which we could uh, the very first thing that came that 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 comes when we discuss the sidecar is so in here we could put everything related to the observability because both the you know the and the logging, the metrics, some sort of metrics, and also the tracing, since this is built on top of HTTP, we could make the usage of this. And uh, and actually add the capability of observability within our distributed system uh, without writing any sort of code with uh, within our SP.NET Core application. So very cool, cool thing. And also this would gives us also this capability of mimicking our the traffic within our system. So based on the sidecar, we could. Create mm -hmm. some sort of some sort of mirror traffic mirroring, yeah, uh, which could be could be very handy. And it's good that you mentioned this because, uh, of course, there are already existing tools, uh, sidecars, uh, and proxies working this way. So I think the most popular one would be Envoy Proxy, yeah. right? Very very extremely performant proxy. And keep in mind that when you work on the level of using your sidecar, uh, custom sidecars, it has to be performant because. There are like there's like a lot of benefits, but the potential drawback is that well you have another process that has to for example read the request, maybe change something uh, within the request body, and then redirect, redirect this request to the particular service. So there is like some additional processing, some additional requests going on. So it has to be as performant as possible. So Envoy is a great great proxy, and it's been there for many years now. Used by lots of companies. Also part of the CNCF. Yeah, also part of the CNCF. Uh, it's been it's actually used in many places, so this is really great proxy. But also recently from the Microsoft, uh, you can for example find out this Microsoft Rever reverse proxy, which is called the ARP. It's still in the preview mode, but definitely worth watching. So you can for example try of using this one and build your custom, let's say, sidecar using ASP.NET Core, just like we did here with this simple scenario. And 
thinking about some practical usage there, we'll talk about Istio in one of the less, less, like less lessons in this module. But for example, maybe you have also heard about Dapper, not the Dapper for the ORM library, yeah. but the Dapper for the distributed application runtime, which actually uh, is built on top of the same idea. So the Dapper simply provides you the sidecar written in Go, and you start the Dapper infrastructure, and you can uh, easily integrate between your services through HTTP, gRPC, some sort of message broker abstractions, and the Dapper will give you these sidecar proxies running next to exactly. your apps as you know these processes that will uh, just uh, capture the traffic and you know log something, redirect this uh, request to you, you know enrich the responses, yeah. and so on and so on. So very great concept. Uh, just keep in mind that there might be once, some performance drawbacks. Yeah, once you actually understand the sidecar, the idea behind the sidecar pattern, uh, the understanding the idea about the service mesh, mesh mm -hmm. is quite straightforward. Of course, the internals, uh, when it comes to how this is managed, uh, is completely different story. But uh, I mean, in theory, it's pretty now from this point, it would be pretty easy to uh, to actually understand how this whole service mesh idea mm -hmm. can be applied within our distributed system. So when it comes to the to the Kubernetes basics, that's it, uh, I would say at this point. So we have this, some sort of knowledge and for now we're using the uh, the, the console to manage our Kubernetes cluster. Yeah, but like in a real life scenarios, I mean, you can use console, but usually look for something more user friendly. Let's say some sort of uh, user interface but just like with Git or any other console tool, it's good to have like a proper understanding of the tool uh, and, and its CLI. So then when you jump on later on to some user interface, you know what to do. So it's not like a magic for you when yeah, you invoke some actions. And if you want something more sophisticated uh, than, the, uh, than the typical, you know, kubectl, you have this uh, K9s, I think. Yeah. If you would type K9s on the GitHub, you would see the CLI for managing uh, managing the Kubernetes cluster within the console, uh, so something more sophisticated rather than having the mm -hmm. the regular kubectl get pod and something. So uh, this will also help you. Um, Looks like a PM2 a little bit. Yeah, some some, equi idea. some equivalent on the on the Kubernetes uh, level. So that would be it. However, we'll move one step further. So we'll introduce the rancher. We'll see the, its cap capabilities. How yeah. this. So the rancher will be some sort of equivalent of the portainer, but on the Kubernetes level. Yeah. However, this will have a lot of great integration and the mentioned service mesh. So the Istio will be one of them. And this will be some sort of, um, yeah, the finalization of our distributed system, adding one more, but yeah. the very last, uh, some sort of abstraction layer on top of our system. And this will uh, allow us to add these great capabilities that we've already seen uh, within, this, within this course. So just stay with us for these two final lessons and we'll discuss both the rancher and uh, in the Istio.